All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Uh, I have downloaded the 2012 version, so if my interface looks a little different, that's probably why. And if you want, you can actually go to the Autodesk website and download this for yourself, a free trial version. Uh, I think it's for 30 days, so I definitely would recommend uh, going and checking that out and see it for yourself. So anyway, uh, for this tutorial, we're going to focus on an underrated tool called uh, Bend Deformers, which allows to create simple geometry and bend them in a format where you, if you are creating, let's say, for an example, a pipe, you can bend it and it won't mess up the geometry at all. In fact, it will flow very nicely as well. So let me just show you an example. I'm just going to create like a simple cube. So a simple square like that, and then just drag that up, and there you go. So that's you know pretty simple, and so to speak. Now the thing that we're going to use to create this box to you know to ha allow this box to you know bend in a, in a very unique way is we're going to use a, a tool called um, Bend Deformers. And if you go to your Animation tab. You go to create deformers, nonlinear, bend, and uh, there's flare, swine, sine, whatever, squash, twist, wave. But for this video, we're just going to focus on bend. Now, if you click on the little square, you can see that it base gives you the basic format of it. So low bound zero, high bound uh, ten, and curvature four. So we'll just leave it at that for now. So let's uh, create. And as you can see uh, for yourself, we realize that, well, when we create this, it, it formats the, the shape of the object in a really bizarre way, and uh, I'm not really sure why it does that. Now, obviously, if you want, you could go back to, you know, the, the options and just, you know, level these out. So you can make that, like, zero or this, you know, one. So obviously, this has um, something of a you know, you need to fixture. So let's see, let's reset it. And there we go. I think that looks a little bit better to start with. So why don't we just create that? So we'll just uh, delete that, create deformers, nonlinear, and bend, and then create. All right. So now you're thinking to yourself, hey, where, the, where did, what happened? What did we just do? Well, if you go into your attribute, um, you know, your attribute editor and see go to your inputs, you'll see this bend one show up. And if you click on this bend one, you'll see that you get a series of options. There's envelope, curvature, low bound, and high bound. So let's say we want to bend this, uh, you know, let's bend this box up. So let's click on curvature. And if we want, we can actually create a bend out of this. So, and there you go. I mean, simple as that. Um, you can see that the geometry is now bent in the format of the actual curve of the bent geometry. So this is what was basically installed into this um, cube as we had created that d deformer. And this is what we can get. I mean, it's pretty unique. I mean, the geometry itself is pretty, you know, self, I mean, it, it's pretty much in the same format. It's just that now it's been bent to fit the exact size and the exact shape of what you wanted it to. Now let's say for an example, we wanted to uh, leave, let's say, the bottom bent, but the top one still, the, the top one wasn't affected by the bend. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is go to your high bound and then just basically play around with that and get it to about zero, and there you go. So now when you manipulate the, the, the shape of the object, only the bottom object of that gets affected. So the higher the high bound, the shorter, the, basically the shorter it is. So, or if you want to go up to three, you know, that's how far it can go. And then you can just, you know, play around with it. So it's pretty, it's pretty neat. I got to say, you know, you can create some really cool things. In fact, just by looking at this object right now, it seems like it, like a, it's one of those, um, one of those handles you see on a, on a, on a gym locker or some sort of locker you would see at a school. So in fact, if you wanted to, you could actually just start from, you know, modeling from this. And, you know, if you if you wanted, you could basically do an Apple D, which is a, a duplicate, and you could just format exactly from this uh, object. And, you know, you can have tons of fun with it. So, you know, you could just basically do something new. I mean, this is this is new. I've noticed for for the new 2012 Maya. So, and you can yeah, you can, I mean, you can have 
tons of fun with this. So I hope I went from the wrong angle, but yeah, so I mean, there you go. So you can extrude and manipulate this all you want. So, all right, well, we're going to just for now for the tutorial, we're just going to delete that. All right, so we got this idea down pretty, pretty well. So let's delete all that. Why don't we go ahead and start with uh, a pipe? I think that would be rather suitable. So um, first things first, let's just get back to our normal view, create a, a nice small pipe about that size. That's pretty good. F for focus and obviously five for shaded, four for wireframe, etc. All right, now before we do anything, let's go into our inputs for the poly uh, pipe and let's actually increase the subdivision height to about 100. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because this will allow for the shape of the object to basically have a easier time bending than having all these rough edges in between and then looking a little bit um, you know out of shape and not necessarily a very smooth um, bend. So all right so then what we'll do is we'll rotate this negative 90 on the Z axis and if you want, you can go ahead and just sort of just tweak this out a bit. I'm just going to make this a little bit more uh, longer than it initially was. Okay. And then same thing as usual, animation tab, create deformers, nonlinear, and then put in the bend. So, but for this one, I think what I'm going to do, since this is a little bit different, I'm actually going to use this as zero, this for, I think, four, and then the curvature 10 just you know to apply it and now here we go so this is what we get for the actual thing now the only problem is is that you know it gives us a weird shape but to fix that all you have to do is just sort of bend it in between like that um, apparently I'm rotating it on the wrong axis so I have to figure out why it's doing that but you can see just from that that obviously it has its format so um maybe if we want we can make this 10 the high bound and then for curvature 4 maybe that, let's see if that works so let's uh, go back to the rotate z axis and oops rotate z and see if that works there we go that's a lot better so obviously it was just a matter of tweaking the curvature and the high bound to where we wouldn't get that really peculiar shape. So, and then if you want, you can go and get your gizmo out and just sort of play with it and get this really nice curve. So, that's really cool. And it forms kind of like a ball. It forms, form, sort, it forms like a little ring in between. Now, let's uh, press a Control Z and go back. And now, if we want, we could actually kind of just play around with this. So, I guess for the curvature, are for the high bound you know you could play around with that if you want you know if you wanted to go back down let's say to five that would be fine I guess what will happen is that you will just get just more of a rounder shape you'll just get more of a rounder shape but if you want let's say for an example the curve to go a little bit more inward um, I would guess just up this up the curvature to about maybe an eight and there you go so once again just upping the curvature will create a, a smaller distance from the actual pipeline to the end of it so I mean that's pretty cool I mean you could go basically format something like that I mean that's pretty cool so all right but for now we'll just leave this at four and for the high bound we'll just leave that at ten and I guess if we want to we could probably just you know even if it's, it's a matter of just experimenting with you know the different method with the different options that you have so if you want to have something a little bit farther out you would increase the curvature if you want something a little bit more closer you would increase you know you would just increase the curvature and what I meant to say before was you would decrease the curvature if you wanted something farther out decrease so so anyway um, as far as everything else is concerned you could go ahead and make this you know smaller you can make this wide, well, taller wider you know any shape you want so to speak. But let's do something really cool. Why don't we actually have this thing animate as it's forming this uh, so-called ring? So what we could do is we can just kind of bring this back, you know, a little farther out like that. It's pretty good. Okay, and then f since we're on frame one, we can actually set a key. So we just press S on your keyboard, 
and then go all the way to 24, press S again, and then this time, however, we're going to form that uh, ring, so to speak. So something like that. It's not perfect, but I think you guys get the, the, the gist of it. So press S again for 24 on frame 24, go back to frame one and then let it play. And there you go. So pretty cool. So now we've created something of an animation, you know, where if you wanted to have something playing your, in your scene where something is forming a little circle, like, you know, you have this curve, this curved line forming into a shape of a, of a ring, that would be even something to look at. So, I mean, you can go way more into detail with this, but this is just somewhat of a slap, you know, a, an easy slap down a version of it. So, I mean, obviously this isn't very, you know, difficult, uh, you know, intricate. It's just very simple and to the point, but you can go ahead and play around with, you know, the curvature and the high bound any way you want, uh, so to speak. So, but yeah, I mean, this is basically all about experimenting exactly what you can do with this type of, you know, with this type of tool. So, and this is a really, this is one of my favorites, I gotta say, because not only can you create some cruel geometry, but it gives, it allows you to bend some certain ways that, you know, you don't you have to spend time trying to, I guess, model something out and then having to extrude and then bend it in a certain way and then the geometry looks a little bit, you know, a little bit weird, so to speak. So, but that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope this was helpful for you and gives you a little bit more of an introspect about, uh, or a little bit more of a perspective on how to play with this type of tool. So, but yeah, that's basically about it. So, hope you enjoy.